Hey everybody, this is Shahaf. I will be in uh, ETHCC in uh, Brussels uh, and I will give the keynote in uh, the Layer 2 conference called uh, L2Con uh, alongside you know, protocols like, uh, like Arbitrum, Polygon and so on and so forth. So my keynote uh, will be around the future of the internet and uh, how privacy fits in. Um, and for those of you who are watching, I'm just going to give the same keynote here because I assume most of you won't be in, uh, in uh, ETHCC in Brussels. Um, those who will be are, more, are very much invited to L2Con uh, to see the keynote. Uh, but other than that, uh, if you plan on being on uh, ETHCC, please reach out uh, either to me directly or, or, uh, or to the team. Uh, we'll probably do a small community gathering uh, while we're in Brussels. So without further ado, uh, I would like to show you my uh, keynote. So uh, let's get into this. It's pretty clear that uh, the internet as we know it is in a junction. Whether the future will be uh, where it is today, Web2, where uh, a few big companies control the data, the information, um, the user base, hence the reality that we live in, or will we have a decentralized uh, internet where users own their data, uh, own their value, their, their, their money, um, and everybody can build protocols? And when you're thinking about this uh, future, this is what you kind of like need to understand. You need to understand really how things are built right now. So Web2 is what you see in, in blue. There are centralized companies, right? Like Amazon, Google, Instagram, you name it, right? Uh, and you interact with these services. Nobody sees that interaction. It happens behind the scenes, but the data, everything, you know, your photos, uh, your money in the bank, everything is stored in a silo that this company owns. Now, what's the problem with that? I get a great user experience when this happens. The problem with that is, is twofold. First, if you don't control the data, then it can be changed, modified, seized, censored. Everything can happen. You can be deplatformed. We all know that. Uh, but even more than that, these centralized silos become a honeypot for hackers. Everybody want to breach it and steal the data. And it happens, you know, almost every week we hear about another data breach. The last one was Ticketmaster. On the other hand, we have what is blockchain, right? So you interact with a service, let's say with a, with a DEX, okay? You control your data, you control your tokens, you control everything, and you interact with this service. Now, this is great, obviously, especially now when, you know, when the, the user experience becomes better and better. Uh, you know, because of scalability and because of a lot of other good things. And users own their data. Now, what's the problem with that? The problem with that is that when we interact with the blockchain, the data, our data, can be visible for everybody, uh, but also the metadata, like the data about the data, the transactions, what tokens I hold, this becomes visible as well. That's the problem with public blockchains. So, the trade-off right now is, do I want to own my data, but then it becomes visible to everybody? Or would I rather give that data to a third party uh, and they control it, but it's not visible to everybody? So it's kind of problematic because let's say we understand that Web3 is better. I'm not willing to have my bank account public so everybody can see it, my health records public, my shopping history who I vote for, everything becomes public. So that's the core problem that we are solving with confidential computing, with privacy. So it's not just about, hey, I don't want people to see my tokens. It's more about shaping the future of the internet. Because if we don't have that, then the internet will remain in Web2. That's the, the, the most important thing to understand. And it's not just me saying that, obviously. Uh, Vitalik Buterin. Uh, said so in, in January last year. Uh, one of the largest remaining challenges in the Ethereum ecosystem uh, is privacy. By default, everything on a public blockchain is indeed public. Again, this is not uh, a feature, it's a bug. So what do we do in Cody? You all know that. We are bringing confidentiality to Ethereum. 
it begins in Ethereum, we can obviously grow this uh, over time. So we protect data, we also protect the metadata, and we do so without sacrificing performance because there could be all sorts of solutions uh, out there, but inevitably they will sacrifice performance or utility or they will be too expensive or too slow and so on. What we do doesn't sacrifice that. And we do that because we believe in the freedom of choice. Selective disclosure, what does that mean? It means that you decide what information you want to share with whom. So you can be yourself. If you need to hide and change what you do, you, you're not acting yourself, you can't really do the things that you want to do, then you're not free. And if you don't have privacy, then you can't really be who you want to be. So we believe this can be different. Now, confidentiality does not mean anonymity. There's a good image here showing that. Anonymity means that uh, the transaction is visible, but you don't know who is doing what. The people behind the transaction remain anonymous. This has a lot of regulatory issues behind it because it can become a fruit bed for money laundering and all sorts of bad things. Confidentiality means that I can decide who I want to show this transaction to, but I am visible, the fact that this transaction happened is visible, but not the content of the transaction, not the metadata in that transaction. So coding v2, while we're building, is a, a, a privacy-centric Ethereum layer 2. So what does that mean? It means that with us, you can build things that you couldn't have done before, uh, whether it's artificial intelligence. So what about private learning? What about uh, giving all these data sets that AI can train on, but without actually revealing these data sets. What about DEXs uh, that are not susceptible to uh, MEV because transactions are private? Or if I'm doing, I, I have a great trading algorithm, not everybody uh, can see it. Uh, real world assets. You can't really do real world assets with major institutions where everything is visible because it's against their mandate to show exactly what they do and how they do and when they do, right? It's illegal for them. So uh, with privacy, you can actually have real world assets at a large scale. Gaming, say you wanna play poker with someone, you can't do that on chain because you can see the card, right? So that is also uh, possible with, uh, with privacy. Uh, social networks, decentralized social networks. If messages and everything that happens on a network is visible, then that social network is, is broken by definition. Just imagine all your messages on social network being visible uh, because they're on chain. Uh, new types of bridges, marketplaces, governance, obviously, you can vote without everybody seeing what you're voting. Uh, identity is a big thing, and we're working on that with our partner, Civic. Um, obviously, people you know, want to be able to kind of like uh, prove a few, a few things about their identity, but without actually showing their entire uh, you know, passport. Uh, healthcare, critical. You gotta have privacy when you're dealing with uh, the health records of, uh, of people. Uh, regulated DeFi, institutional DeFi, they require privacy. Uh, and CBDC, it's a big thing, and, uh, um, and it's, it's uh, one of the first requirements that any central bank uh, has. Uh, we know that because we're speaking with quite a few of them. So that's just a few of the things that you can build with Coding V2. Now the how is also uh, interesting because we have a novel approach and a novel type of technology that we are the first to employ and bring into the market. Uh, we're using something called gobbled circuits uh, for the first time on, on blockchain. So the example uh, I gave yesterday on a, on a, on a Mario Nafwell um, uh, spaces was uh, two friends uh, want to know who's richer. Right, but they don't really want to uh, uh, say how much they, uh, what's their net worth uh, to each other. So they write that net worth on two pieces of paper, uh, but they don't really write the number, they write something encrypted. And they put that in a magic box, and the magic box tells them who's richer without ever revealing the number and without any of them or the box or anybody out there uh, actually knowing what's their net worth. So that's something that you can do with with gobbling circuits. And so, you know, the story behind it is that it allows multi-party computation, MPC, uh, on encrypted data without revealing the inputs, which is something that you can also do with fully homomorphic encryption. But with gobbling circuits, you don't sacrifice performance. Uh, you have a much faster computation. 
much lower latency, lower storage requirements, and you can run it on any device. So it's really uh, you know, the unicorn of encryption. Now, there are other approaches to privacy on blockchain. All have their uh, merits. Uh, I've mentioned fully homomorphic encryption, and I think the big merit behind it is, is the fact that you can work on encrypted data without needing to decipher it. You can also do that with cobbling circuits. They are trusted execution environment, which are super fast. The only problem with that is that they're not really trusted. Uh, uh, over time, uh, it was proven that most of them were hacked at one point or the other. You have zero knowledge proof, ZK, not to be confused with ZK uh, that is used for scalability, which is something uh, you know, different in the, in the sense of privacy. Uh, ZK for privacy is also very nifty and cool. Problem with it, you can't really build interesting apps because uh, you are limited to uh, one person and the proof that you already have. You can do something that is multi-party, like a DEX uh, with, uh, with ZK. Uh, lastly, multi-party computation, or, or actually more something that is called uh, uh, secret sharing. It also has a lot of merits, but scalability is a big issue. What I like about gobbling circuits, uh, which were developed by uh, researchers from, uh, from Soda Labs um, that uh, Coty helped uh, fund recently, is that it brings all the good things from all these encryption systems uh, are together to one fast and uh, lightweight solution. And we're bringing that to Ethereum and we'll probably be you know, the first uh, to launch uh, this year a mainnet. Now, to summarize, privacy is very important. This is why it's a basic human right. This is why it's protected by regulation like GDPR and HIPAA. Uh, it prevents exploitation. It means that you're not a target. It means that you're free to be who you want to be. And it has tremendous commercial upside because you will never have institutions and enterprises doing things on chain if you can't keep a secret. With that in mind, I invite uh, everybody, uh, whether you are watching this video or you're now in ETHCC watching my keynote, we invite everybody to join our builders program. We already have uh, quite a few applications and quite a lot of builders already working uh, on, on, on our developer network and soon our testnet. Uh, we are dedicating $50 million to solve privacy on Ethereum uh, with grants that are available. You just need to apply. Um, all you need to have really is some EVM background or solidity. Thank you and stay coding.